Hell yeah! From the Bureau of Manhattan Community College, Tribeca Performing Arts Senator, and the New York Comedy Festival, Harmontown is now in session. How about uh, we introduce our game master, Mr. Spencer Crittenden. Hello. Hello, Spencer. <laughs> you, you got a really adorable little desk there. Oh, yeah. I'm owning my space. <laughs> <laughs> Let's bring out your mayor of Harmon Town, Mr. Dan Harmon. <laughs> The River. On 3rd Street. Patrick Henry had a birthday here. Dan, you want to give us a little, uh, some of your, your, you're known as kind of a New York, like, I kind of a, like kind uh, of a guide. Like you're, yeah, yeah. you're like the Anthony Bourdain of New York. You know like that you... podcast, the, the, the Bowery Boys? You, it's, it's, yeah. you know, it's like a podcast and they talk about New York. The living, thriving New York. That's the, I, I, when I listen to those guys, I'm like, it'd be nice if they knew a thing or two about the city. Right. Uh, where, where, where can I get the best... Spats? Spats. 1853, at, right at the prime, when Central Park was just a cattle ranch, um, that's when the spat was invented. What happened is General MacArthur, uh, who used, it was part of the Sugar Trust, right. um, he wanted to, uh, to figure out a way to turn shoes into boots. Um, <laughs> Because a lot of people don't understand this, but the sodium street lights um, were highly uh, combustible. And um, so it was a sign of wealth uh, 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 if you were uh, singed. <laughs> because Fifth Avenue was basically a, before it was a candy bar, it was a, uh, a, a fire hazard. But it was where the wealthy lived. And uh, so um, uh, it boots were uh, 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 less popular than shoes because how could you survive a, a sodium uh, streetlight fire uh, with your boots intact? So the, the wealthy liked to wear shoes, which, which a lot of people don't know this, where a shoes were invented at, th th that's, a shoe is a burnt boot, it's a... <laughs> There's a, sh a shoe doesn't make any sense. Like everything was a boot, and then and then and then this fashion right. thing happened. Where so, it was like so you the needed more, to look like you were in a fire. So the more of the top of your shoe that was burnt off yeah, meant you the, were the, the, a the sign more, of wealth. The, the more the the nearer the Rockefellers you were, um, uh, who in that day you could see dancing at the Green Mile, uh, <laughs> over on Third and Crenshaw. You know there were only three boroughs back then, in the, when, 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 uh, 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 representing the two gangs of New York, uh, and the uh, and the, of course the 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 the, the unofficial mayor of, of New York at that time, uh, uh, Butterfinger, uh, Butterfinger Boss Todd, uh, and his famously corrupt uh, mayor, mayor. You were talking Trump. earlier, Dan, about why they call Wall Street Wall Street. Right. Well, it was originally a wall. Uh, you, it wasn't a street because it's where people were making money, and you don't want a street there. Poor people follow streets. So you don't want them to go where your money goes. Um, uh, and then there was a sort of like a famous like squabble. Uh, uh, they threw a bunch of uh, ticker tape into the harbor, and uh, and the rich people said, "What if it's a wall and a street?" And Wall Street was born. <laughs> Just make it a street, but we'll call it Wall Street because it means if you're here, you're not welcome. No, go ahead. You can take your trolley. You can make your uh, lightning bike. <sighs> New York history. I'm just, I'm just full of it. I, 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 uh, Where's the best, best place in town for you to get a nice Chinese hot pot? 
Well, I know a lot of people will tell you never to go above 103rd. <laughs> but, if you, but, but the truth is, the Upper East is the new meat pack. <laughs> and I will, I will find myself right between 95 and 97 on the corner of A and A. <laughs> the best wontons in the Duplo. Uh, look, we don't have a lot of time. We're, ri we're ripping through. This is, a, this is a festival set. For those of you listening at home, uh, you know, this is, uh, you're going to be like, whoa, this podcast is really impressive. Uh, no, we're just, we're just moving at a higher, crisper pace because um, it's a festival energy. The, uh, we're in a packed house here. I think we're at the... Uh... <laughs> There's not a single empty seat. <laughs> Don't look it up. Uh, I, I believe we're at the... I think tonight, tonight's attendance is 48,000 people yeah, tonight. I, we, are, we are at the Metropolitan Opera House. Uh, and uh, we couldn't be... A lot, uh, a lot of you people could have been at Elton John tonight at Madison Square Garden, but no, they chose to be here. And the fire department's been turning people away. No. They can't fit all that people in here. There was, uh, not to make light of uh, awful, awful current uh, mass shootings or the mass shooting du jour, but uh, the sense of the, the, Maybe the, a little uh, bit. The one of, uh, well, no, I'm, I'm, I just, I, what I think is, is odd is getting on a plane to go from California to New York and feeling uh, 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 safer because Griffith Park's on fire right now as we speak. Like my, my house is about to maybe burn down. Yep, and, we've been keeping uh, eyes on that all day. And, uh, and it, it just feels nice to, to come out to get a, nice, a nice quiet evening in New York. Yeah, man. Where, the, where, 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 where we've got it under control. Where the stops are frisked. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <sighs> so, so at a certain point, well, look, I, no, no, no guests. I'm not going to come to New York and like bring out, like, oh, here's John Oliver. I easily could. That would be an easy thing I could do. <laughs> Butterfinger boss Todd is here tonight. <laughs> uh, but it would take time, you know, he'd be playing catch up and all this stuff. But I, 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 look, I brought Rob Schraub. Let's bring him out. How does that feel? What the feel fuck it. is going on here? I'm good. What? What? Did, he, what, did, he, what? <laughs> did you bring enough gum for the rest of the class? What is the we're, we're, for, for the listeners? We're describing Spencer's <laughs> hilariously. My dick. So it, it looks like a walker had sex with a desk. <laughs> What is the little b black plastic thing in front? Is that I, like a music? My dick's just popping out back here. <laughs> Photos are good podcasting. He really can't. All right. What is the front plastic section? It's of the to hide my dick. <laughs> and the microphone is glued to the top because. Or what? Well, why would you think that? That's a stupid thing. Turn it upside down. What? Turn the desk upside down. No, it's not stuck. Why would you think that? That's Lift a stupid up. thing to think. Uh, I'm looking at... Don't it, make it, me it, move to the next stool. Oh, God. <coughs> you were saying, Dan, I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is kind of a rare show, because usually, I mean, we, it's not the first time coming to New York. We, we take the show on the road. We love going places. But uh, this is probably the first show that if we, if we talk about the flight out here, <laughs> it's the only thing we're ever going to talk good, about. That's good, though. That's a good show. <laughs> we burned, we burned a lot of material on the way over here. I'm going to give you we some some headlines. And at first, uh, in the interest of the the, uh, I w we took a we took a limo to LAX from Los Feliz, and we got you get into one of these limos, and then there's like there's a ice thing, and there's some glasses, and 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 I'm like, I, every time I get, I go like, well, then we should have 
booze. I don't know what that is. Oh, I think it's called alcoholism. You, 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 but you, you, you see ice and then you see glasses and then you're like, well, then I got it. Okay, so then I go and get a bottle of, uh, of vodka and I get a bottle of uh, Fernet Bronco, which is that uh, Hitler uh, medicine that, that that Jeff's always talking I, about if you're a fan of the podcast. How is, is it, is it, is it, is it fixed your Hitler yet? Or you... <laughs> You came down with some Hitler. I had a, tr I, I had a 24 hour Hitler. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hitler medicine. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and we're just drinking in the traffic on the way to LAX and we're having a and good we, time. And we, were, and, and we were fine. We, we were, were listening fine. to Celine Dion. There was a no. CD in the limo. I think that's the last time the limo was used. Was you like, were playing the Little Mermaid soundtrack as loud as it could go. You and Cody were screaming along right. a different song, we different were, lyrics to the song. Jeff? I do. I, oh, okay. I, I, I remember everything up until about... Do you remember me going, maybe another song? Maybe a different one? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. I knew it was starting when Cody would be, she goes like, play Chicago. Play, what's the song where he, uh, he had it coming? And, and, like, like, and I'm like, play He Had It Coming. And Jeff's like, it's called He Had It Coming? I don't know. And, and uh, it's not called He Had It Coming. It's a cell block tango. But, uh, you know, it was a, but, but, like, but it's like, like, you know, Cody kind of like, I can see, you know, I've been, been with her for, for many years, and I can kind of start to see, like, uh, which is usually an adorable amount of, like, like, when the Gary Busey starts to come out, like the... <laughs> Can like I just when, stop she, when she when she starts to like 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 starts to become there's let like me, a, let, there's let, like let, lines being drawn in the sand for let, no reason. Let me just paint paint one one picture. Also, Cody is dressed like a garage mechanic. She's, well, yeah, she has this like comfortable, very very sexy for how comfortable and practical it is. Uh, usually, those things don't don't overlap, but at the, at the middle of that Venn diagram, bright pink chrome shoes, dressed like a mechanic. She and looks just like a mechanic arms. from Night Rider. Yeah. Yeah. Arms uh, everywhere, and she's like, you know, she's like, put on that song. I love that song, and then the the that song starts, and it's like it starts with like uh, pop, swish, Schwartz, Cicero, or whatever, you know, that's right. So, and, and Cody's Cody's of all of the songs to defiantly pretend you know the lyrics to. It's like, it's like pop, Cicero, Schwartz, like like just, you're just saying what you're hearing. That's not you don't know the song, anyways. Um, <laughs> But we're like, so we roll up to LAX, and I'm like... Okay, see, now, now if I can hit pause here, this is the last thing I remember. <laughs> and this is, like, the foreword of the story. Right, yeah. because because the, the, the stars of this story that emerge are going to be uh, Jeff Davis and Cody Heller and... Uh, <laughs> and Steve Levy. But I would call it a, a, a tale of two kinds of drunk. Uh, I don't know what happened. Like I, f I feel like I roofied You drank myself. a lot and got drunk. That's yeah, but what I happened. Was, but like I, 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 I disappeared. I became uh, like, uh, right. We'll get there. Yeah. I think it's, it's, he disappeared. It's, it's, it's actually a rare story. That it's actually probably most important to just cut ahead. It's like one of those like like the, the, Jeff will Jeff will be awoken by uh, uh, police. Uh, LAX police uh, on a bench. Um, and so there I and ask him, where are you going? And his answer it will be Los Angeles. <laughs> and they will say, you're in Los Angeles. And he will then, he will, and the, where are you going? And, he'll, and after a while, they'll arrive at New York. No, no, like, no, no they, 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 they got me they there. They New York. They, they said, where are you going? I said, and I paused and I thought about it. I said, I don't know. <laughs> I, th I thought I was coming home. So because I, what happened, what we've, what we've pieced together, I can tell you the subjective things. I can tell you that I last saw Jeff and Cody. We got split up into the TSA checkpoint line. I looked over. These are my friends. I'm having a great time. I'm actually, I thought I was going to be the self-destructive yeah, rock star because yeah. so I'm like, you, I'm in my anti-TSA mode where I'm just yeah. like, I can't understand what you're saying. You have to take guy, your laptop the guy out of the bag. To, <laughs> the guy goes to Dan, sir, can I look in your bag? And Dan goes, what if I say no? And I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. That's, that's how drunk I was. I'm like, oh, God. He's, he's, he's the third drunkest person I'm in the like, story. I'm oh, like, oh, my like, God. I, 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 was, I, I was like, I'm, okay, I'm just going to fight the government. Let me answer. Let me and answer I that turn, question. I, I end up being the Matthew Broderick in this story. Like, I, I end up being the Anthony Michael Hall of this breakfast club. Like, and, and I'm, I'm like, like, what are you going to do? Take me to Guantanamo? Um, so I, I get through that line, 
And then Cody somehow, maybe it got activated by the backscatter machine. Like, she's a like marionette of Courtney Love when she gets to the other side. <laughs> and the only person holding the strings is, is God. <laughs> and, and God is not a good puppeteer. He, <laughs> he's not. But I don't want to derail us with that stuff. We'll get back to that. We'll get back to right. the, your but series she, of like, 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 like we, get, we get up to the, the lounge and where like, the, you know, Cody's like, so, something's happened. It's like a delayed, probably takes 20 minutes. Or like, like it must have just been, we were overserved in the limo. And, uh, <laughs> and it must just be hitting her. We, and she like, she's, she's getting unable to be motile. And she's, she's starting to like, she's just like making sounds. The, 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 and, and, and all you can register is that she's defiant about something. <laughs> but, you, but, but, and then I'm like not, I'm not a good person either. Like, 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 you, you get to do your impression of me. Yeah, yeah, go, Shrob. Shrob has the best version of this story. Well, I, I, I Because I'm looking around and I'm seeing a guy, if I see, Shrob's the if most I see Cody being loosey-goosey in a fluorescent lit lounge at 6 p.m., like, and then I see a guy across from her going like this. Maybe that guy's playing Pokemons, but maybe he's TMZ, and no. I'm just like, I don't want to feel protective. <sighs> anyway, chaos, we get into the lounge, chaos, chaos, chaos. I'm like, here's my ticket. Oh, you're in first class, go ahead. All right, that's great. I, you know, I start walking. I turn around enough in time to see Cody going to the woman across the counter to go, what up, bitch? <laughs> what up, bitch? And I'm like, oh my god. And just to give you an indication of how the, the, that bitch's response was in German. It was like she was just uh, there was absolutely no way that she. We don't have the papers. She, she, well, I, well, German maybe evokes that stuff. I'm saying like make her Swiss, but she was a tourist. She didn't speak English because her response to "What up, bitch?" was "Weltenschlangen." I don't. I know. What is happening? I came here for the gummy bears and the so, Seattle I get, needle. I, it just I I get like. My brain goes blank with deuce chills. Like, I'm just like going, ah, and I, I turn away, and then I turn back again in time for you to go, uh, catch you saying to the Swiss-German woman, look, um, we don't work here, and wait. you're acting like we're supposed to know this stuff. And I'm wait, like, wait, wait, oh wait, 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 wait. Well, Holy yeah, shit! Wait, you're confusing. I, wait, I'm not. I wouldn't say that. I'm not saying that to the tour. I was saying that to the people at the counter that yeah. worked for the airline. Yeah. Yeah. The, wasn't she the Swiss German? No, woman Cody wasn't the... saying what a bitch to a person that worked for the airline. She was saying it to some poor bystander who was also sitting in the reading area. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, I was far away. I didn't see that part. Okay. So I'm glad well, we had this. Discussion. We're piecing it together. Yes. Right. And we'll the great thing there. is, again, so it gets worse. So Cody. <laughs> So Cody is like, bah, 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 bah. They and finally... she lost her boarding pass at this point, right? And her footing. She fell down a couple times. <laughs> she, and like, we all love Cody, by the way. She's yeah, great. Yeah, we but love Cody. You do, you do a little non-linear storytelling thing here because the whole time there's also this like the sideline of like Steve the, Levy is right. We have doing this mentioned. like get him to the Greek if there's like eight. <laughs> Uh, Russell Russell Brands uh, and, and 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 the theme I keep hearing is like, um, well, can you try to? Uh, I'm gonna try to find Jeff, and I just keep thinking like, where's where's Jeff? Where's Jeff? And, where's so, Jeff? and then later, Jeff, that when we were driving here, Jeff's listening to the stories about Cody, and then Jeff Jeff at one point goes uh, goes. Oh well, maybe I was there, and that's why I left. And Shrab goes, "No, you were gone in the Star Wars crawl. You were, <laughs> he goes, you were the silver C three PO, which is true because what we piece together is here's what Jeff did. Jeff, know. Jeff was in the TSA, the TSA checkpoint, checkpoint line. Checkpoint. We think he got through security. I was right? last, pretty sure I, he I was got last through seen the X ray machine. TSA. Right, he was just in a line and then disappeared. And then fate turned his body physically around enough that 40 years of touring and landing at LAX and eight quarts of Fernet Branca broke his sim and he. 
he ended up f- just walking oh, I'm at LAX. to baggage We're home. claim from the fucking x-ray machine. Better call an Uber. And he called and a he lift. And he did call a lift. And he woke up on a bench and three the, hours later the, the, by the, stun baton. Between, between, getting out, between getting out of the limo, the next thing I remember is police tapping me on the shoulder. I was sitting downstairs outside at Arrivals, and a cop is going, sir, uh, your friends are looking for you. Because Steve Levy called the fuzz. Because here's the thing, Spencer. I was never, I was in New York when this was all happening. I was already in New York in a hotel room. Because for Shut some reason, Spencer doesn't like to travel with us. <laughs> <laughs> right. So. I put foam uh, on all the sharp corners it was, and it was, stuff. It was two uh, uh, LAX cops that tapped me on the shoulder and go, hey, your friend, they moved your flight, come with us. Because Steve is now boarding the flight that is leaving right. without Jeff, yeah. and he's like, Spencer, Jeff is missing. Yeah. Can you call someone? And not only did I have nine texts uh, from Steve, I had four or five texts from the Lyft driver that I called, because <laughs> I was going to go home. <laughs> And she's like, I'm here. Where are you? I'm upstairs. What the fuck? And I, I called the car thinking I was leaving the goddamn thing. So the cops bring me back in to Alaska Airlines. And they go, OK, we have a flight for you. You're going to be in first class, though. There's one seat available. And the woman says, uh, oh, and the cop says, sir, where are you going? And I said, Los Angeles. And he goes, <laughs> you're in Los Angeles. Where are you going? And I went, I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 and, then, and then we all laughed. The cops and the lady, we all had a good laugh about it. And I said, look, I've been on tour a lot, and I'm very disoriented right now. And I don't know what's <laughs> going on. Disoriented. I, I tour a lot every Friday night, too. But, uh, I lost my compass. I, 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 I'm going to tour it, after I get done with you. Somehow, because Levy is awesome, and he got me a, uh, like, he got me a, like a driver from, the, from uh, JFK, I somehow managed to make it to our hotel with my bags and my, all of my shit. We thought you were going to come out on the carousel when we got to <laughs> New York. We were so sure. But I, I just realized we're committing a major podcast crime, like oh. all the true crime shows that focus on the uh, murderers and uh, not enough on the victims. I want to bring out <laughs> Steve Levy. Uh, uh, because... Levy. <laughs> He was the only on. sober one, and we were only able oh to piece all this together by asking him questions. Okay, but now I'm like, so sorry. Can we have Stevie, Steve Levy come back on? I have a different music drop for him. Oh, damn. Can, I'm can, so sorry. This will just take a second. Can you play it through your mic? I can try. All right. Lay Steve it on. Levy, everybody. Wasn't this so much better? <laughs> Thank you, Spencer. That is a good theme it, for you, a, 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 a it, muffled, it, muted, distant. That's what he deserves. He doesn't deserve a generic sound clip. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so all's well that ends well. Steve Levy gets me on the plane. I get the car home. I make it. But meanwhile, there's a whole, the, the A story is still happening aboard there, yeah. the original flight. Yeah, because most of the story happens while you're unconscious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I'm, yeah oh. it's, it's more fun to talk about Cody, but that's because we have answers about <laughs> her you uh, you went into the black hole i did i think i roofied myself i don't know what happened uh i gotta tell you i went to the university of miami and uh (laughs) when i was there we won playboy party school of the year and uh i had a lot of training being the only sober person at that school (laughs) uh dealing with the most drunken people and I, i really got to Use those tools last night really that good. I sharpened yeah, and Some highlights that I wasn't there for because eventually I had to leave Cody in the lounge because I was like, you people who I've not met, but hello, uh, including uh, Ruthie Aslan's cousin. Uh, Ruthie Aslan was a community editor. And she, did, she's done a, she, was, she was my right hand on a lot of amazing stuff I made, and her cousin's here. Shout out to her. Or, or I don't know if her cousin's a... You know what? You can be Ruthie's cousin and be a guy. It's a new world. Whoa. <laughs> Shout out to cousins for being inherently non-binary. 
Fuck your heteronormative nephews and nieces. Better bread, Cousins better Cousins are where it's at. They can be anything. All right, anyways. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, my, my <laughs> time. You, you, I'm sorry. No, no, I mean, my, I don't want this show to go by without people knowing that my, me, my I, girlfriend on the bridge to the, what do they call the bridgey thing? The jet bridge? She made it. I the never thought she would you would get her that far that yeah. you that you you had to you kept Well let's go going. back. Let's start from uh let, let, let's start first yeah. warning. Let's do a little I mean this is a little Rashomon, right? Like let me Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, 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 yeah, yeah. I yeah. just want I just wanted to you that she saw a baby like yeah, in a yeah. stroller and said way too loud, "Look at that fucking baby." She was <laughs> she, I, I was standing Cody up against the wall, and I was looking at Cody. I was like, Cody, tell me, tell me something. And then she sees this baby. It's about two feet to her right. She goes, look at this fucking baby, like just an inch away from touching its hand. And the mother's just like, uh, oh, uh, no. This is what Cody does. When Cody, Cody, Cody drinks too much, she becomes Richard Dawson from the 70s but, like Family Feud. She just keeps, she, he, she keeps welcoming people to her drunk of her. So like she, when she got on the plane, of her. she looked over and there were two incredibly handsome gay dudes who were like, like, like they were very, they were, they were, they were as cool. The reason I know they were gay is because if two straight guys that handsome were hanging out together, they, they, they it's, 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 it's well, just not, not possible. true. When you and I hang out, it's, there's no, it's not they, a big deal. They were a very, but they were, and they were, they were, they were, they were, they, but they, they were clean cut, like, like straight edge kind of looking guys, and uh, but just actually strikingly chiseled and and like uh, handsome, and and uh, but these are the these are the thoughts you keep in your head. Um, but not when you're America's aunt, my girlfriend <laughs> after a drink, uh, uh, who, who comes on the plane. I sit and, her down. And she sits, she plops down in the seat and looks over at those guys and goes like, whoa, look at these good looking fellas. Look at these, look at these, these handsome guys. guys. Uh, they're very handsome. They're very handsome. Uh, what are you, where are you guys, you guys going to Alaska? Cause we're on Alaska Airlines. <laughs> And they go, no, are you going to Alaska? <laughs> Is that now, how they dress in Alaska now? <laughs> are you skipping over part of that baby encounter? I'm skipping over a million things. Yeah, this, yeah, is, yeah. this is a post-Netflix audience. They can handle is, it. Is, is, like, is, is, did is, you know that Jonah Hill's character was actually an octopus after, you know. Wasn't there a much more important thing with the baby? No, than... there's a million important things. I just yeah, wanted yeah. to make sure. I, did, did some of these things, I'm like, I just want, I just want to pe people to know how much I love my girlfriend and why. why like, I like that, that even the the that the worst case scenario with my girlfriend is is uh, is dark Bill Murray, <laughs> that that she's, or that she that she's like look at this fucking baby, and then she you know she I, you know she kind of like was starting to unzip her her no no her yeah. she, she halfway jumper. unzipped her jumper and her boobs were out a little bit and. I don't know what. Why did you do she's that? She's trying Cody? to feed the baby. Yeah, she's yes. like, "Hey, kid, hey, kid, <laughs> come over here." So, so after okay, she down, you guys after take she over. flops down and says, "Take a look at these good-looking dudes," and they're going, "Oh, okay, all right, whatever." And then, like, and I'm sitting like, a, like a row or two behind. And then, so for the next hour, I hear, "Go to sleep, go to sleep." That's me. That's great. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Why? Uh, are you gonna break up with me? Go to sleep. <laughs> Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. But Go she sleep. never went to sleep. No. She just sat there and kept, and every once in a while, look over at me like my dad after eight Southern Comforts when I was ten. Like I would just get this feel this glare, and I would go, "Go to sleep." I did nothing for five hours. I pretended to look at my phone while I was like, I, I was like, you're drunk too. You don't get mad. Just go, God, just go to sleep and wake up normal. But she never did. She just slowly got more charismatic. Like it did, it's a, and the, 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 she had best friends with the flight attendants and everybody. She's still like, what, what, I'm I don't fun. Know what you I'm guys fun. Yeah, I know you're about. fun. I hate you. <laughs> Dan, Dan's in the lounge go, going, I don't know what to do. I'm waving my option, options. You're a piece of celery right now. You're a piece of celery. I want to dump you in a dumpster. You're going to dump me? Why? <laughs> <laughs> Just like, I'm like, oh my God, I want to I die. Well, 
Whereas I, like a gentleman, was just having a nice little nap outside on a bench. Le Levy, do, do something to mitigate that glimpse he just gave these people of me talking to my girlfriend when she's incapacitated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we, here's my side of this Just even it story. up. My, so, we, we get through security. Jeff is not nowhere to be found. I'm like, well, look, Jeff, one thing about Jeff is every time we travel, he always splits up from the group and goes oh, yeah, to a bar. Oh, yeah, first thing that happens when we get through security is, is he Jeff's just gone. He just ditches us and goes and reads a book somewhere. No he wants sense, to go read Jeff. Moby Dick in the coolest bar in your city so you can come out here and say, oh, I love the penny pincher. And you guys go, oh, that's, wow, that's extra cool. I can't believe you read a Cormac McCarthy book in the fucking phone booth cafe. So, so... Uh, <laughs> Our little, our little touring family was like, look, this is what Jeff does, this is what Jeff does. I was going, no, he did not make it through security. I, <laughs> I was like, I, Jeff's the grown-up. And, and I, I, was, I, was, I, I knew I had to get them to the lounge, so I get them to the lounge. We had the altercation at the, at the front desk where we couldn't get in because... She lost her boarding pass, right? Cody lost her boarding pass. Dan didn't know which card he had to give to get us into the lounge. Shrab was already checked in. Cody was going, this bitch, she's so... She's got us in, she's got it, this fucking bitch. She's uh, <laughs> And the lady's just like, she's not gonna make it on this. They will not let her on the flight if she's like this. And then I'm like, God, fuck. Okay, well, this changes my night entirely. Um, then we realize how bad the situation is. Dan sits Cody down. She's stumbling. She could barely stand up at this point. <laughs> She's stumbling while sitting down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she was, and, uh, she, and she, 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 she was in danger of missing the chair she had been sitting in for 10 minutes. <laughs> she was this still really in the process of sitting Rob. in it. Shrub, <laughs> Shrub's texting me, what's the Wi-Fi? What's the Wi-Fi? <laughs> I gotta send an email. What's the Wi-Fi? A man I'm is dead. Quiet. I'm being pretty quiet. I'm like, oh, look at these lunatics. And I'm like, oh, hey, I can't figure out. There's signs, literally a billboard right ahead of me. The Wi-Fi password is, what's the Wi-Fi password? So, so I, say, yeah. I say to the group, I gotta find Jeff. They're like, you're being ridiculous. Jeff is fine. No, I gotta find Jeff. So I go down and I, I look at every air airport bar. No Jeff to be found. I call Spencer, I'm like, I know you, you just got to the hotel. I can't find Spencer, I can't find Jeff. I'm, I might have to call you in a little bit to help me with this one. I'll let you know how things go. Cody's really blasted too. I, we may not make it on this flight. I don't know what the hell's gonna happen. <laughs> and then I get back up to the, the lounge. Cody's gotten worse. She's wearing her black glasses and she's like. She, like I thought that was cool. I was like, oh, now, now she yeah. looks like a Kennedy widow. Like, yeah, she's yeah, like, she's like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, thought, I thought that was cool. I, 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 maybe this is a terrible, it's probably a terrible codependent relationship, but I was kind of, I was kind of turned on some of the time. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I, I called Jeff about 10 times, couldn't get in touch with him. I, I called church. She hadn't heard from him. And then the flight starts boarding and I'm like, Rob, you guys have to get on this flight. Uh, I turn to Dan, I'm like, flight's boarding. You know, we have to make a decision. And Dan's like, to Cody, Cody, I love you. I think the best thing for me to do is cancel this show, take you home, take care of you because you're, we, you're not gonna- yeah. give him the mic. Swap you're mics. you're, you're I, cutting uh, it out. Yeah, yeah, give him the other mic. All right. Now you take the other mic on the, on the oh, stool. Oh, yeah, 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 okay. <laughs> you got it, you got it. You know, a lot of people could do that without any words. Um, <laughs> so, uh, he, he looks at me, I, what, what, what am I doing? I can't, I, I, I can't deal with it. Like, they're not gonna let her on this flight. Look at her, she can't stand up. I said, uh, I got it, don't worry about it. Don't, don't even, just get on the flight. I don't, you know, I'll figure it out, I'll figure it out. <laughs> Dan goes, I don't know how you're gonna figure this out, but okay, I don't wanna cancel this show. There's gonna be hundreds of people. It sucks, I don't wanna go to New York without Cody. He turns to Cody, he tells her that he loves her about 12 times, he kisses her, and he goes, I'm so sorry, I believe he's gonna figure this one out somehow. And he goes, and I, I look at Cody, I'm like, Codes, it's you and me, bros tonight, we're gonna figure this out somehow. Uh, where's your boarding pass? She's like, uh, I don't know. I had printed her a second boarding pass at this point, she lost this one. I was like, okay, Cody, we're gonna get on this flight, it's boarding, don't even trip, we're, I gotta find Jeff. She's like, yeah, what? 
Jeff, where is that guy? Like, are we gonna make this flight? What's Jeff doing? Like, ah! You know, and and so I go and I, I talk to the lady at the front. I'm like, I need three flights on, like three seats on the next flight. She's like, there's only one first class seat for the next three flights to New York. <laughs> I was like, I don't think I'm gonna make it on this flight without losing one of my my team. So I, called, just, I just want to pause here and point out that uh, a, a, a podcast flying across a first world country. <laughs> to do a 90-minute show shouldn't have a casualty ratio as high as a police action in the 70s in a third world country. Like, 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 oh, I think, I think, I think they're like Spencer's like, did you guys get on the plane? I'm like, yeah, there's, there's some casualties. Like, we're, <laughs> I think like seven of us came, five of us are gonna be at, at JFK. Yeah, so uh, I was like, I had to make a decision. It's like, do I try to find Jeff or do I just try to get Cody on this flight? The woman at the front was like, you gotta do your best at getting her on the flight. Just don't have her say a word. Try to make her walk as best as she can. <laughs> and you can do it. You can get her on this flight. And I was Everyone's like, rooting I'm, for you guys. I'm, I'm gonna get her on the flight. So I, I go to Cody, I was like, Codes, we gotta go board this flight. We're gonna be late. She's like, all right, let's do it. I'm really tired, I gotta pee. I was like, we gotta just wait. We gotta wait till we get on the flight. She's like, can I wear my glasses? You better wear those glasses. You look so fucking cool. Um, so I stand Cody up. She staggers a little bit. I'm like, here, here, hold, like, hold my arm. And so we, I lead her to the elevator. We get in. She's very talky. She's like, what's happening? Are we gonna make this flight? Where's Jeff? Do these glasses make me look as cool as I think they do? And, and, we're, and we're walking to the gate and um, we walk up to the guy and I'm like, can we, can we scan in? He was like, yeah, I'm holding Cody's boarding pass so that she doesn't have to do anything. She's holding my arm very quietly. She knows exactly what she's doing too, like a child. She's like playing this game. I scan, I get, I get scanned in and as soon as we hit that, the like bridge to the plane, she goes, I killed it. <laughs> uh, they didn't know. <laughs> they didn't know. And oh, they didn't yeah. know. But then, but then the first thing she does is she turns around and bumps the guy in front of us because there's still line to board the flight. And she and I was like, Cody, you can't, don't, please, don't do that. I still can't get a hold of Jeff. She bumps the guy again. He's like, what's wrong? Like, and then I was, and then I leaned her up against that wall. She sees the baby. She does the thing. Like, oh, look at this fucking baby. And then she unzips her thing. And then I, I, I there get, was no buffer. There's a, she didn't go look at this fucking baby. Hey, baby, admit it. You wish I was your mom. So like, it was like about a three second between baby and me going, N and this action. Um, but then I walked around the flight and Dan was like, no, I don't. <laughs> I sit her down and he's like, what the hell is happening? Where's Jeff? I sit in my seat, I'm calling everybody. I call Spencer, I'm like, our flight's about to take off. Please, can you call like TSA and see if they, <laughs> they have Jeff in a room somewhere. Right. I, while he's doing that, I'm calling the LAX police going, have you guys seen my friend Jeff Davis? They haven't. I go to the front of the plane. I, I tell the woman, one of my party isn't here. And she's like, well, who is it? They look it up and he's, they're like, he didn't check in. And I was like, that's not possible. I because checked him in on the computer right. when I, and I printed his boarding pass. She's like, well, they, they, they already lifted his, they already gave his seat away. And I was like, okay, well... I, I don't know. I, I, they, the LAX police couldn't, didn't have him, and uh, we took off. And you just said, Hail uh, Mary. Oh, no. Jeff called me just as, we were, as the plane was moving. He's like, Levy! Levy, where are you? Where are you? Play the message. Can you play the message on yeah. your phone? Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. Oh, no. It's, it's not embarrassing. What Jeff you're, doesn't what, like this. So, what's so crazy is that. No, the, 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 like, think of everything that we just told you, and then this is Jeff's Jeff, explanation. Jeff, I was like, Jeff, we're about to take off. We're about to take off. He's like, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. It's really loud out here. And it's just honking horns and cars driving by. So, the last like, time you see someone is outside of Sabaro. In, in, a, in a Logan's Run complex that is illegal to like <laughs> cross certain thresholds where everything is so official. And, and, and you don't expect horns to be honking the next time like, you hear from them. 
Dan's texting me like, where is Jeff? And I'm like, he's on the street somewhere. There's a lot of honking in the background. I was impressed. I was like, he's the new Amelia Earhart. I'm like, how did he get from a plane to a street? And That's illegal. He, he, so he calls me, he, he, he keeps calling me. He can't hear me, he can't hear me. I was like, text me. He, <laughs> and, and then he calls me one last time. He goes, I can't hear you, but I'm gonna get on the next flight. And then he called me again and he left me this message. Um, while I was mid-flight, and we got it when I landed. So let's see. Hold on. Oh boy. Hey, Steve, it's Jeff. Um, I, I fucking flaked out, and uh, I, I'm on flight 1420 from LAX to New York, JFK. Oh, someone called Steve. It fucked it up. They fucked it up. Sorry, everybody. But, I mean, the point is, is that Jeff goes. Hey, sorry, I flaked out. 11.30 p.m. So l let me know if I can get a car or otherwise I'll get my own car. Uh, sorry about that. Talk to you soon. So, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> we, <laughs> so, so he was so fine and we were right. So the question is, what's scarier? Uh, you know, the Cody version where it's like, holy shit, you had too much to drink. You're King Kong. Uh, the government has to be like, but meanwhile, like a very frightening level of like, he's like Denzel Washington in, uh, uh, it's just like, hey, is he, is he, is that after he got woke up by cops? Yes. That's and so after. he's just like, yeah, so a little bit of a fucking uh, spot of bother. <laughs> yeah. Nothing I can't handle, baby. <laughs> it's in the way that she is. <laughs> I, I fell asleep. I, I woke up on a fucking bench. He, I, was, in the, uh, I was sleepy the, time Davis. The I one thing he kept saying was, I spaced out, I spaced out, and all of us are going, what the fuck spaced does that out. mean? That's the best you know, euphemism. You know when you space out? We've all been there when you spaced out and then wake up on the street corner, the cops poking you saying, what city are you in? <laughs> it made me like rewind it uh, since we've met like how many times you've said you've spaced out to me out you space out sometimes we all space out i fell asleep rob <laughs> while was, walking I, somewhere i was sleeping <laughs> no if i got i went through security and i thought you know what this seems like a bad flight to be on i, I don't like the vibe and i thought I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go out and sleep this one off yeah there's going to be another flight in an hour. It's all going to be good. If you get sleepy while you're walking, you might be a space neck. All right. <laughs> a space yeah, neck? But fuck me for anticipating a, a laugh volume. <laughs> I should know better than that. Thank you for that valuable lesson. Yeah, okay, hard. now that we explained how we got here, let's start the show. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> From beautiful downtown New York, <laughs> it's yeah. Harmontown. Yeah, I, uh, 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 here's some things that, that Cody's doing when she's not offering a baby her breast on a random flight. <laughs> Uh, she, she introducing me to this high maintenance show. It's like it's, it's set in New York. You guys like high maintenance or New Yorkers? I love that show. I just wanted to I just wanted to signal boost it. You seen this show, High Maintenance? No, I haven't. What's it about? It's, a it's, weed. A, it's like a like an anth, anth, anthology. It's it like like a lot of good shit. The pitch doesn't go is a ooh what a clever idea. It's an anthology. It's like a drug dealer in New York and like all of his. It, it, it kind of like weaves through the lives of his uh, customers and stuff, and then his life as well. But it's just really like uh, it's just it's such a good show. Does he so, sell different drugs? I thought it was just weed. It's most yeah, it's weed. Oh okay. Yeah, I've never watched it. I mean, I don't, I don't. They, they, I didn't see every episode. There might be stories about how maybe he can hook you up with Molly. I don't know. Hell yeah! But uh, <laughs> next you, season, it's just really well. It's just really, really, really. Exciting Do you think we can talk to somebody to here at the uh, Tribeca? Uh, Performing Arts Center about buying this desk so we can bring us back to LA so Spencer can oh, yeah. Spencer can always be at that thing. I like it. <laughs> uh, here's a question that was asked in my hotel room, but I think it's been asked in the podcast before. Uh, I, I, I must have been Cody that asked it. Does Spencer's dick have a beard? Uh, really? Is that that sounds fake and made up? That really happened? That was a real question, but I don't think I don't think she expected the That's answer good. to be yes. Yeah. I think Don't all dicks kind of have beards. We were doing we were doing a callback to the fact that we were ended up in a conversation. Oh, oh, oh. shit! <laughs> oh, 
She's already hella, everybody. No! 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 We got places to go after the show. The vodka back. No! 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 Go to sleep. Do you, go to sleep. <laughs> do you feel sleep. okay about the coverage? Uh, go to sleep. Wait, didn't somebody, Dan, what, what was the, the, the person next to you said, Thank you. like, asked you at the end of the flight about, like, having to sit next to her, right? Yeah, there was a guy, like, Cody, Cody bolted up out of the seat as we were landing, you know, and at that point when everyone's got to get up to the, you know, stand up, and Cody was immediately befriending the flight attendants and uh, um, talking to them, and you could, you could kind of just hear her voice wafting back through the plane, and it, a it was bit. at that point that another guy in first class looked at me and in a kind of, like, male bonding, like, or fellow traveler kind of thing was like, You'd, you had to deal with that the whole flight? Be, but because he didn't, the, I sent in me dealing, because I he, what he saw was he me get we on a strangers. plane he and unload just... my fucking uh, No Man's Sky laptop and my Xbox controller and like, uh, and then he saw everyone's aunt get on the plane and plop down and be like, what's going on? Um, <laughs> and, and, and he probably never saw or heard any indication that we actually knew each other. Right. <laughs> So he thought it was like I was in a planes, trains, and automobiles sitch. But then he was like... uh, I nailed it. I think I nailed the whole thing. Like, I stand by what I said in that fucking bridge. (laughs) Fucking killed it. Like, people... People were digging my vibe. Like, I was... It was fun. It was energetic. No. I don't remember... You don't remember anyone not digging your vibe. I don't. (laughs) That is true. And, and I, I got to tell you, that's uh, like, look, all's well that ends well. Uh, best sex we ever had later when we checked into the hotel. Uh, Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Okay, but I did, I actually came up here to clarify something else. I don't really care about that story. But yes, I did for real ask if your dick had a beard. Okay. Um, well, do you want to know the context of it? Well, do you, because you, obviously people have pubic hair. I know, but I, I guess I was wondering if yours... Yes, I know, obviously. This know wasn't, that, but I, you I right. was asked this it, while you were having sex with Dan. No, this was. Like, like, like I said, before. best sex right I ever before. had. <laughs> so that's a tip for you out tonight. Go home and talk about me. It was, ask it me, was ask because, me more questions was, about Spencer's dick. It was because earlier Do you think I had. It has a beard. Do you think it has a beard? It was because. I don't know, I don't know. Oh, oh. It was because earlier. I asked if your dick floats in the bathtub. Oh, yeah, I remember that. If it floats up, like, I wanted to know, and Dan said... Wait, I don't know if the time frame lines up here. Dan said, must be nice, because... Yeah, everybody's always... Look, I... wasn't I'm, saying that yours wouldn't float. Right. Do you think, do you think, do you think I have a micro penis? No, I, the you have a perfectly sized penis for, for my you. super yeah, you're tight, you're a human small pair of players. Yes, vagina. we all, you it's get, perfect. you, you, you get, you get a badge when we have that conversation and I get to be a toothpick. I still want to know, like. I'm nailing it. I guess um, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. We okay. found each no, other I and love, we, your it dick fits. Is the perfect, I love it. I love it. You know how much I love it. In it fact, shouldn't on, matter. On the way here. You took a shower, and while you were in the shower, I was saying, you know, wash that dick, dick extra good, because I'm going to suck on it later. And, and then I, he did. And I, and, I, and I heated that oh, call. He was working on it for like 20 I, I, minutes. I, I, I conditioned it. I'm ready. Well, first he refused the call. I'm looking forward to it. This is usually a point of anxiety with previous lovers. I'm looking forward to sex. So, I mean, too, baby. Me too. <laughs> it's what? Me My too. puke is going to throw Hashtag up right now. <laughs> um... But Spencer said that his dick does float in the water. Yeah, so okay, then I was so, imagining so wait, a dick flo- does, Spencer's does everybody's dick dick in the water, float in the bathtub? But not in a sexual way. Whose dick does or doesn't float? Yes, yes, float, yes. No float, no. No float? Okay, that's what I thought. I, okay, I just, but all uh, the ladies out there with pendulous breasts, which is a clinical term for the kind of breasts that, like, you know, you can put a pencil under. Like some women don't have those kind of breasts, they have just like pert little breasts, you know? I have the kind of pendulous breasts that in the water, they get extra buoyant and they float. So I was wondering if men have the same kind of experience. Right, and they do. Well, not Dan. yours does. <laughs> I think yours does. But when your dick is basically a nipple, <laughs> 
you can uh, send too. me to Mars. Send me. Uh, let's skydive with I, me. What's your dick doing? I just when we hear these conversations, like, Whoa, what's your what's your dick look like in a botanical dome? And I'm just like, this is more evidence. The fact that this is a question for anyone means I have a really small dick because I this wouldn't be a question if everyone's dick looked like mine. Can you? Uh, you would never. You would never be like, does it float? What do you mean? It's a can fucking you put a, like it's a it's a pepperoni in a fucking <laughs> turtleneck. It's like a. It's a it's an alien mandible that, when in need, uh, when it's agitated, when it's time to strike, an impressive Rick Baker Ugh. effect Ugh. Uh, happens, but not so impressive that I then am in the realm of these people who apparently, not, while flaccid, have a floaty dick. It's and not on top of the water. It's just being upwardly mobile. It's, it's moving up. It's trying to get there. I picture your penis is so long no. that you're sitting in a bathtub and the head... It's just like a pool The head noodle. goes up like a bobber when you're fishing. Yeah. And it, no, it's and not it's like that. And it's just floating and then like the rest of it is like a... just a kite string. No, no. Rob... I does, your, does your I, dick float? Yeah. Yeah. I just I was assumed there when you guys were talking about it. I know. I Everyone's said I took got a, a great bath big and dick. Oh, that's why I started thinking about it, because you took a bath, and I asked if yeah. your dick floated first. You, you, said, you said, did you use bubble bath? And I said, no. And you said, so you just looked at your dick? And I go, oh, yeah. yeah, why do you think I took a bath? <laughs> I got to look at yeah, that. Yeah, I remember. Okay. Well, so... I could have been on that I fucking think it's a lift. Good, look, I, I been wanted home. to... I had, I, had, I had a really profound therapy session before I came uh, to New York, because uh, I've had a rough uh, year, and rough year for me means nothing. Um, but uh, uh, I was, you know, my therapist is privy to, you know, the little labyrinthine thing I've been going through and all this stuff, and uh, we, we, I, we really talked about it, and I, I, this all does relate, because I kind of like, she was at, she's like, all right, so all this shit's over with, all this stuff that you were thinking, now, like, all right, where, what, what is, what are, what are you doing this weekend? I'm like, I'm going to New York, I'm doing the show. And she's got all these questions. I was like, what, what are you going to New York? What are you, are you worried about going to, when you do a show in New York, what are you worried about uh, the, uh, being in public or wh whatever? And I'm like, what, what, are, what are these questions? I don't even understand. Like, what is your perception of me? And it goes to this guy, I go, look, here's how I feel about uh, 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 this stuff right now. I, I don't, I, I feel like for a year I have not been, uh, able to do what I've done all my life again, which I said on my last episode, which is just talk like, and, and, and stay feeling safe because of the venting of the shame and uh, like letting people know where I'm at and all this stuff. And I, and, you know, I started to get, it was like, it was, I came, I came through that session because she made me understand that she's like, so, You've been selling for 44 years this product called I Don't Care. And that's been very comfortable for you. And what you're really upset about right now is that you care. And you resent people for making you feel that way. And you resent the ramifications of that and all this stuff. And like hearing her kind of like parse it in this way I, what I came around to was, oh shit, so my job is not whether or not I should keep doing this or not doing it or whatever, it's like vulnerability is a good thing. Yeah. It's a thing that I've been allergic to. Like when I w whenever I was on a playground and I would get beat up by the bully, sometimes I'd fight back, sometimes I'd take the punches so hard that the bully would start to freak out. Um, sometimes I'd just cry and piss my pants, but, but like, like in any of those cases, the only thing that actually fucked me up was when the well-intended person would come up behind me and go, hey, what are you doing? Why are you doing that to this guy? And then the bully would go, cause he's dirty and his hair's nappy and he smells like a fish. And then I, and then it's not, that's not what would, I already knew that's why I was getting the beating. I was like, I co-signed on that. Yeah. It's just, I would. <laughs> I'm definitely not showering for this kind of person. Um, so let the beatings begin. And, and woe be to he who says enough. Um, it's, I think that was some kind of from Macbeth. Um, the, the thing that would make me cry is when that nice person would come up behind and, and, and then say to that bully, go, so what if he doesn't comb his hair? So what if he smells like a fish? That doesn't make him a bad person. 
You're a mean person. You're the one beating people up. You shouldn't beat people up just because they smell like fish. That would make me want to murder <laughs> the guy sticking up for me. And it would make me, more importantly, like want to get out of there. It would make me really, really sad. It was the thing that hurt about getting beaten up. It was not the beating. Like, I fetishized getting beaten. I fetishized the numbness. I fetishized the abuse. I, I was like, like, don't, just don't ever, ever fucking try to convince me that I'm vulnerable. And because vulnerability means destruction. But no, it doesn't. That's the thing that I recalibrated. And so I just, like, like, these relationships between shame, vulnerability, and existence, and what our job is, and what bravery is, and all this stuff, I finally came out of that going, okay, so vulnerability is good. It's actually good to tell people, here's what, here's what I'm embarrassed about. Here's what, sh here's what makes me feel bad. Here's how you can actually hurt me. Here's the amount of pain that I'm feeling. Those are, those, that, that's a good thing. To, to share that stuff. Um, it's a bad thing to let trauma push you back and cause you to start getting more and more practical. That's called PTSD. It's, it, it's, it's like it, you, you experience a random piece of chaos that makes you wonder what the fuck you've been your whole life, and then your solution is to limit your experience to a little straw so that the distance between the cup and your mouth doesn't have as much of an opportunity to be fucking violated again. That's, that's chaos winning. That's that cycle of abuse. That's, 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 that's the problem. And it's natural, and it's good, but like, I finally figured it out. Like for this last year, I've been like, "What am I? What am I doing on this show? What am I supposed to be doing?" I, I like, 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 if, 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 if there's things that that talking about them actually helps Nazis, like, like, then what, what? That, so, so then my, so then the way you fight Nazis is you pretend they're not Nazis, and all this shit, just like like the spiral of thought, and all this shit with this fucking like mentally ill people weaponized by 4chan trolls and people like doing their best to try to get me fired and all this shit, all of the experiences that I've gone through this last year, the common theme has been, well, I know one thing's for sure, the worst thing you could ever do is go out there and talk about it, because and and that I, I, that, that it's been true. That's a true thing. And so it's, it completely fucked me up. But I, now I got it. I think I got it. And I'm sharing this now because I'm pretty sure Jeff is probably pretty embarrassed that uh, he, <laughs> he's such a 70s family feud drunkard that he, <laughs> that, that he can fall asleep on his feet and end up in the clutches of the police um, outside LAX. But... Like, I, 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 you know, I want, I want you supported in that vulnerability. I don't want you punished for it. I, I, and I don't, I don't, I think if I were to enter your head, I'd be like, well, don't talk too frankly about this stuff because then when it comes down to whether or not you're this or that and whether you should quit doing this or quit doing that, then everyone else has all the power because they're all weighing in on your life and all that shit. But no, that's not true. We can continue to be pathologically, unapologetic, uh, self-exploratory, narcissistic, fucking sociopathic messes. Um, I th we have to double down now more than ever about <laughs> what we find in our navel every morning. If you're gay right now, can I ask a favor of you? Could you please be more gay? In, in, in everything that you say and everything that you they do, if you're if you're if you're a person of color, can you and, and and you happen to have a distaste for identity politics, could you find a little bit of a love for it, just just to antagonize the kinds of people that want to, that, so that we can draw battle lines between sh those who want shame to grow on trees, and those who want to overcome it, um, because that battle will be won by the people who oppose shame. Uh, and, but, but this battle that we're fighting right now, where it's like, who should be more ashamed? Well, guess who's gonna win? Uh, shame 
mongers, shame experts. Yeah, but I, I'm, I'm right to feel ashamed about my behavior today or last, last night. Jeff, how dare you imply that I met, read you wrong? <laughs> Fuck you. No, I mean, like, like it, it's, I, I, I wasn't sure if I wanted to discuss this tonight because it is embarrassing, but um, it happened, and, it, and talking about it out loud makes me want to improve myself and right. not, not do that again. Like, I, that, that's really, really fucking bad. It's really shady. It's so weird, because, like, I honestly, hearing the story, I was, like, standing back there hearing it about me, and I was like, fucking sounds so cool. I'm, I'm, fucking, <laughs> I'm, I'm fucking a fan of my... I didn't even know I could say and do such yeah. cool shit. I was wearing this fucking jumpsuit that I remember... I remember peeing, and a sleeve might have brushed the, just the top of the, the water, because for, to the jumpsuit, you have to take off the whole thing and, and sit down and you're like naked on top, you know, when you pee. And I definitely remember being like, remember not to let the sleeve go in the water. And then I don't remember anything else after that. <laughs> anyway, but um, I, I honestly, you know, I thought it was a win for most of us. Oh yeah, no, um, we did it. Steve Levy, I give you so, I mean, you know I love you, man. I. I yeah, Don't we, remember anything, but I can't. I do remember. Lee's you know, the MVP all the way. Rob, you were a real piece of shit, though. I didn't do anything. I just was like, oh god. All right. I, let's I, see what I, else. I we guess do. I'm ashamed of that. I didn't. I didn't help out. What is this little red pouch that you're holding, Rob? You've been holding a strange, like, kind of leatherette this pouchy thing. This is my. Um, excuse me. Oh, your glasses. Glasses in it. Oh, have I ever told you guys that uh, I've known Rob Schraub for 70 years, whatever it is? 72. Uh, 72 on Monday. And, and he still maintains, he's never bothered to let this go, that he, uh, one of the many neurotypical things that he hates, like Pictionary, uh, big words he hates, you know, he like, he, he absolutely hates uh, the uh, happy birthday song, and the crazy thing is it's about to be his birthday. And since we're here at the Metropolitan Opera House, I, I thought we should, we should make Rob kill himself by singing him happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Robbie. Happy birthday to you. Wait, hey, do we Dan? have to pay, pay twenty five thousand dollars for that? Dan, do you, right you, do you want to sing in the comedy? No, it's sports? legal now. It's fine. I think it's legal now. I think they like kicked those uh, no, the sisters that own the rights to yeah, the Happy Birthday know, song. They're like, is it a well-known thing? Floor, get do you guys on the floor. know about the TV thing with Happy Birthday? That like it used to cost a lot of money. So that's why on like a lot of TV shows when they sing the Happy Birthday song, it's like a fake. It's like and Happy yeah. Birthday. Happy Happy Birthday. Dan, or, do, do, Dan, do you want to sing Rob? Or the, as uh, in Community, when we fade in and it's Troy's birthday, and they go, to you. <laughs> and, 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 and then on top of it, and then, and then a character goes like, I don't understand that song. Why, why, what do you mean, to you? <laughs> because I'm a genius. And uh, <laughs> it, it, it was great. It was a great episode. But, but I... I I, he, the, the crazy thing is that the happy birthday song, now it's Kleenex. Now anyone can just uh, fucking come in it, whatever you want. Uh, but Mickey Mouse turns 175, and it's, you know, it's time to re-examine America's copyright laws. <laughs> I thought that was amazing. Remember when that happened? It was like, yeah. Mickey Mouse is about to become as old as Mark Twain uh, novels. Like, like, like you, you, you're about to be able to do whatever the fuck you want to Mickey Mouse. And, 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 and like, the entire like, establishment was like, well, obviously we're going to have, that's not right. <laughs> They, 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 and everyone reacted like, "Yeah, well, what are you, what are you gonna do? Be able to like just use Mickey Mouse? That's not fair." We, we all just rolled with it because, well, how would you protest that? Like, 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 what kind of group would that be? What kind of Antifa would be like out front of a building, going like, 
hey, hey, ho, ho. <laughs> Not letting me draw Mickey Mouse, blowing the Little Mermaid has got to go. <laughs> and selling it as a T-shirt, uh, like at Spencer's Gifts. Not you. All right, let's. Uh, sorry. I could. I've been drinking. I could be something. Uh, all right. Uh, 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 Spencer's beard probably doesn't have a dick. So yeah, back know. to that. What's uh, what? What do you mean? Like, what's the beard part in My your mind, in fire. your conception? Um, that you would grow out your pubes, like. Uh, I don't know that you would grow them out in a way that do the curtains map, match the drapes. Well, I you know? do. I do shave like the front wait, three cur- quarters of each ball. Wait, curtains match the drapes. Uh, <laughs> wait, wait. What do you do? I, I shave the three quarters of each ball. Which, which each ball? That yeah. sounds like you have more than two. Right. It gives it gives each of them a little beard. We got we got we got. It's, I think like well only so. Here's what I heard. I'm not on Twitter anymore, so my news comes through weird trickles. I literally talk to people at a water cooler now. Uh, the Girl Scouts are suing the Boy Scouts because the Boy Scouts are dropping the boy part and therefore becoming Scouts. Oh, shit. And so the Girl Scouts are like, fuck you. <laughs> you can't fucking horn in on our... <laughs> You can't transition and then just invite yourself to our slumber party and start talking about how dudes are full of shit. Like, 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 I think it was like, like the Girl Scouts are, that's what I, that's what I heard. Isn't the Church of Satan suing Netflix? Yeah. yeah. For what reason? They use the image of Baphomet. Whose? Baphomet. The... It's Church of Satan. In <laughs> accordance to... They have a Baphomet. Baphomet is a person or a building. It's a it's a it's a depiction of Satan. It's a depiction of Satan. This or another copywritten. demon. Well, what? yeah, it's copywritten. I mean, allegedly. Were, are you a Satanist or were you? Ever no, no. I think it's you all know. very, very Bothelman stupid. Is copy- and anyone who thinks it's at all cool is stupid. Well, so, I, 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 sorry, well, everybody. Okay, so okay, next, next. Okay, uh, here's next my thing. here's my final tidbit that I learned at a party from uh, our Swedish friend. Uh, the Swedish. So, so picture a Swede. Uh, are you are you picturing a, a diversity hire? I just want to seed that because uh, I was amazed to find out from our Swedish friend uh, uh, that in Sweden there are now I'm going to get a bunch I'm going to butcher some of this and some of you in a crowd this big are going to be like no I know what you're talking about and I actually know what I'm trying to try not to get too agitated by my. Uh, like thing, but I, I, I there, the, the Swedes are not OG Swedes. Like they also like they they moved into Sweden, and there were people there that were already Swedish who got marginalized and are hanging out, and uh, they still live there. And it it's nothing any parallel you they, they're called the Sa, Sa, Sami Sa, Sa, Samsvenska Sa, I don't know how to pronounce it but they they look like uh, old navy um, uh, uh, Christmas elves from from they just they dress very festively and midwesterny um, they raise reindeer and they live in tents and they um, I, I they, like I can't would you pull up a picture of them they're just they also look like Abba but I guess their jaws are different or something. <laughs> I, 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 I was so, it was 2,000 years ago that the Swedes showed up in Sweden and then these people then got pushed aside. I'm like, you haven't fucked that problem out yet? How, what, how much races can you have when both people are white and it takes you 2,000 years to years. not fuck each other? And it made me feel good about America because I'm like, we haven't, we're like, we, we just fucking jumped into the fucking dirt and we're like, what are you doing here? I don't know, I'm looking for gold. I'm racist. Well, I'm fucking black. Fuck you. I'm fucking, ow! And we just like fucking, like, and then the people banging gavels and going, look, we need a little fucking railroad. So I'm telling you, these people are free, but not you chicks. And what do we know? Everyone, everyone gets a gun. No, only if it's a revolver. <laughs> 200 years we've been doing this. It's like nothing. It's a blink of an eye. A country this young should have fallen apart with this degree of everybody just like chesting up on each other when they're allowed to. to, to when you talk to your European friends and their dirty little secrets come out, I'm like, you guys, the you, you, you guys, you guys, like 2,000 years ago, like, like, like you, you, you haven't fucked these people yet? <laughs> That's my, I don't know, I just found it uplifting. <laughs> 
They live, they live in the, they're kind of like, in order for Americans to understand it, you'd have to like fuse your understanding. Everyone tonight, like, I want you to go, if you take one message away from our show tonight, I want you to go home and fuck a Sammy tonight. <laughs> fuck any, fuck everybody. Every, everybody fuck everybody. Hurry up. <laughs> That's the, what I'm the, saying. The, 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 the two minute clock is, <laughs> I mean, obviously consensually. Like, 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 that's my point is everybody fuck everybody, not half of you fuck people and half of you say no thank you. And that's, I, let's stop doing that too. Let's, let's all just. Uh, I heard Bill Cosby fell down the stairs in jail. Did you hear this? <laughs> it's like, first date. Dateline, Los Angeles. Bill Cosby, first day of prison, falls down the stairs. So he's like, I did the bar. Oh, shit. You love dropping a mic, huh? <laughs> Wait, I'm good also, at it. Don't, don't people, keep hit throwing, in the head. Keep, people keep throwing sandwiches at him, Yeah, he too? got hit in the head with some, a stale hot dog bun on his on yeah. early, the first people week. Keep, people keep food fighting him, too. I have to imagine, don't, when you hear that, don't you think, oh, must be nice to be so famous that basically you have a, like, he got a bun thrown at him? Like, I'm like, <laughs> the day after I'm in prison, I'm going to have like whatever tattoo the strongest dude told me to get. <laughs> I will have shanked anyone smaller than me that was I was told to shank. I, I like I I will have been It's like that did you ever watch that I Love You Philip Morris story that movie where Jim Carrey is the new guys on the on the on it it just got to prison and he goes, Well, you know, if uh, they start beating you up, uh, always fight back or you could suck their dick. Uh, you know, like that, you could, you know, like either wash their clothes for them or you could suck your dick, uh, suck their yeah. dick. You know, like everybody's like, he's, the, the answer is suck their dick, suck their dick, and the, and the last thing, and you can suck my dick now. You know, and that's like, not so real. So, what is that's not, not right? real? There's a lot of homophobia in prison. Okay. That's true. I well, was that, talking yeah, about the like, movie. That doesn't mean a char this character, Jim Carrey's character, is talking to another guy and saying, like, you, these, these options. Right. Shout out to our imprisoned uh, to podcast listeners. Uh, sure. Which I don't, I don't know if podcasting is a thing Thanks in prison. for throwing that hot dog bun at Bill Cosby. <laughs> Let's see if we can outdo it next week. I do, I, I do want to let you know, I have, a, I, have a, I have a pet peeve about this. I don't like that our society thinks that, like, it's totally fucking kosher, this idea that there's, like, a... Oh, you go to prison, which is supposed to be a bad place. And I'm not saying I'm not being a prude and saying let's stop making jokes about it. I think it's fucked up that we all have this like understanding that oh, and then when you get in there, it's fucking horrible and like like in ways that make no sense and that weren't ordered by a judge. Like you could get raped and you could like get murdered and you, it all depends on whether or not you just. And we all just like go like yeah, that's what prison is like because it should be a bad place. I'm like come on, these people fucking these are the only people you caught and that showed up to court <laughs> and were made themselves available to handcuffs make a fucking life for them in in the joint like 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 it's probably this Alaska Airlines flight made me want to go legit <laughs> no leg room for 5 hours i was like i had i was on my back my feet are on the ceiling i am pretty sure prison's always going to be a drag Let's stop accepting that, that it's Escape from New York and that, like, oh, where you're going, I heard Bubba's going to fuck your butt. Like, that's so fucked up. I'm not saying the jokes aren't, you know, don't make jokes about that. I'm saying, like, like... Are you like, saying we should make prison better or stop joking that it's bad? We should, no, jokes, jokes, schmokes. I'm saying... <laughs> We should we if we're gonna have the largest prison population in the in the world, Let's we put a little effort we in. should Let's start nice. looking at prison the way we look at, at other shit where we're like, well, you know, here's you know like like t tell them America sent you like like like, like our, the prison system is basically like a huge gigantic fucking part of the American experience. Let's define ourselves by how rehabilitative it is and how much it prepares you to be the next Elon Musk. Like like let's like like. like <laughs> Like, show people, show the world, and go like, this dude, grand larceny, d didn't have a chance. Like every fucking. By the time you get out, we're, sign off on him. We're gonna reform you into a rich douchebag. <laughs> got 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 out of the joint, invested in Tesla, and fucking started his own play. Elon Musk uh, is Elon Musk the, like becoming the least likable person. Like every time you read a news story about this guy, he's just becoming a bigger twat. And there's like Nazis, Jeff. Huh? There's Nazis. All oh, right. 
I just get scared because I, I truly do say I, I believe it's possible for me to go to prison. I mean, I was like fucking like like acting badass about searching my laptop to some TSA guy. Like, the, if if you're at the wrong place at the wrong time, you end up in prison. Like, like the, the people are gonna say, well, Dan Harmon's in prison, and then they're gonna go, well, then you know, he's probably gonna get raped. And I, I'm like, like that, imagine how that feels. Like when you're behind the door, like, what do you mean probably gonna get? What? That's not on the menu. I, I, <laughs> That's, that should be a thing I sign up for. That, like, like, all right, well, okay. Preach into the choir, or I don't know. What, what, you definitely or, shouldn't uh, sign up for prison, though. That's true. We might be in, like, the new, this, I think this theater, there's a prison being built across the street, and all of these guys live in the attic, and they're like, come on, fair's fair. We don't want this prison. But, it's, but prisons, it's all local you know, politics. That's there, why they're not. There's all this crazy shit with prisons because you know they're all owned by companies and shit. Yeah. We should open a fucking prison and make it the yeah. best fucking prison that people like. I'll tell you a little tidbit. Harmon Jail. I got in trouble. Let's open a Harmon Jail. We could just Harman we could jail. just put bars on the, the rest audience. of society and yeah. call ourselves prisoners of. We can say we're locked away. I like this, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. A, it, it, yeah. I'm sure everybody's in the mood to follow me on some gimmick for the podcast because what's your, what's they your, really they really got that moon moon payoff. What's your tip tidbit? You said oh, you had oh, a tidbit. Yeah. I, I was saying like I I think I could start a cool prison because when I was a kid I got in I got caught smoking a cigarette in the parking lot at school in high school. I was with three other girls. The principal, vice principal walked down, made eye contact with me, me, saw that I clearly was smoking, but I had enough time to like warn my friends, so they put their cigarettes out, and I took the fall for all of them. And like the principal, nice. she fucking knew. She like she in the office, she was like, "Look, I have to like call your parents. It is a big thing, but like I want to give you props. Like I saw what you did back there. Cool on you. You know, like there was an unspoken thing. At least I think like, we like organized crime. But what happened was, since she felt, you know, I think sympathetic toward me, she, she was like, listen, I'm not gonna suspend you, I'm gonna, make, I'm gonna make this like limited thing where it's just lunchtime detention and all of you guys are gonna have to go because like, I know you guys weren't even allowed to be in the parking lot. So it was, called, it was like lunchtime detention in this room, right? We had to go every day and eat lunch there. By the end of the week, people were fucking getting in trouble on purpose to be part of Lunch Bunch. We wound up having our own page in our yearbook. Okay, all it right. It caught on is what I'm saying. And part of it was, at first, people were just coming to hang out with us, and then it was like, no, oh, you have to, to get into Lunch Bunch, you have to actually get in, so you have to get into trouble, because the teacher, Mr. Sherrod, was like, he outlawed it. And so then they were getting in what? trouble. Mr. Yeah. What? Mr. Sherrod. Oh, okay. okay. That's, like That's what I'm talking about. Sorry, like, Mr. Sherrod. Sorry, How Mr. Sherrod. How old do you think Wait. I am? I have a, I have a question. I'm the, so your teacher. It, lunch Bunch sounds like an awesome sequel to Breakfast Club. And there's oh a dinner sinners, and you know you got the whole. It is a good, but I mean, really. No, uh, no yeah, hold on. Let's not let's not talking about it. It gets right to the pack. to that point, which is that society Snack is remake. supposed to. Well, at least the liberal side of society says you're supposed to be defined by the treatment, the experience the you have as condition. the lowest person, right? So, like, if where's this like like if you if, if someone were to propose prison reform and and say like, oh, uh, when you go to prison, actually, you get kind of a fucking break like this nightmare for people who are like, fuck them. It's like, like, isn't there this like really easy thick line where it's like, well then do you, it sounds like you wanna go to prison, which it, it's, isn't the same with gay marriage and drugs and all this, it's always this debate between people who are like, well what, what, then everyone just starts smoking joints all the time? What the fuck, what's to stop me from smoking a joint? <laughs> and that's always the other person on the other side of the room. It's like, sounds like you wanna fucking smoke a joint. <laughs> Or you're worried that if you do, you're gonna punch somebody, or that, or that you're not gonna, or that you're gonna die, or that you think. And it's like, with prison reform, it's kind of like, what is our real worry that, oh, we're gonna, if you grow up in a, a, a shitty neighborhood and you end up uh, sentenced of a, of a crime, and then you, like, oh, we're, we're worried that the slippery slope is that everyone's gonna wanna go to prison. And like, what if you pushed that gas pedal down and we're like, yeah, make a society where everyone wants to go to prison. <laughs> figure it out. Like, like I, by the time you figure out how to create that society, I think you're gonna have accidentally created 
proper. It fixes itself. Because yeah. you're going to be like, well, then why is it prison? And then you're going to be like, yeah. I, you I, come whatever. out of prison a better person is what you're, you're No, saying. I don't. You don't know what I'm talking about. No, you ruined no, everything. No, no. I was being so clear. They, yeah. were, they were silent because I was being clear. You ruined it. That's the yeah. way I choose to remember this, which I will not in 10 minutes. <laughs> I'm sorry, I ruined the show with my pontifications about society, but I feel like in my head there's like a definition, like the podcast has to be like 70% how we got here, uh, even though we were drunk, and then I, I choose to make 30% somehow uh, uh, educational or something. It was good. It, it's a throwback to my 80s education. Uh, that was like a, 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 a public access uh, programming was born of that. They're like, well, we'll give you a monopoly over television, the cable company, but you have to let poor people use cameras. Uh, it's, 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 and it's they're like, fine, fine. It's a new segment on our show called The More You Drink. <laughs> okay, so we're, uh, we're at the end of our festival yeah, runway. We are. I know. Have you guys I been know. enjoying well, your festival? Thank you, guys you. I love that. Shows? Disappointed. Yeah. Thank you so much for the New York Comedy Festival for having us out here. It's All awesome. the voices that were sad about the show being over were feminine, I noticed. Finally. Yeah, I know. I was, I Finally, was like, we got some bitches on our side. <laughs> what are you, Cody? Oh, nice. it's, it's because Cody's so bon vivant with her fucking beanie and her fucking, like, I'll oh, show no, my titty no, to a baby. I don't guys, give a shit. You guys are good guys, and, and women, we love you. Yeah. And I, I'm one woman. I love you. Love all of you guys. Love all you guys. <laughs> I think this has a, been a fun time for me. Oh, yeah. This is my first time coming on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. I, I've been I've been dating Dan for three years, and this is the first time. And it, the whole reason I never come on is because I'm there. There's really mean people on Reddit, and like they say really mean things. One one guy. Um, like there was a whole thread about like I put a lot of nude pictures up on my Instagram, and this guy like is trying to talk shit, and he's like. Well, I don't even get why she would do that. She's just a fleshy pyramid with a doughy face on top. So guess what I did? I fucking took back the night. Now I take even more nude pictures and I fucking hashtag fleshy pyramid with doughy face on top. And now I'm, li I'm loving it. Embracing the shame. Prison reform. All right? I, 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 maybe that guy is masturbating. To, but I don't know. But you're happier than I am, and I'm happier because I'm with you. Because you, when you look at me, when I get naked and at the foot of the bed and go like, mm, I'm a flamingo, like, like, like I, I don't, I, do I, I'm like, I'm like, holy shit, I'm in a place of no judgment and no shame. It's like, and then it's, it's like you go like, oh, go like that, and I'm gonna Instagram you. I'm like, okay, whatever, I have fine. Can, can I'm, I, gonna, can I'm I gonna get called fat. Ask and one question dumb. to codes. So when when Dan was in the bathroom and you were you were like in the other room saying. Wash that dick, because I'm going to suck it later. Were you in the outfit with sunglasses <laughs> and go, wash that dick so I can suck it? In my it? mechanic jumpsuit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were you in there? Yes. OK, that's pretty fucking you, hilarious. You know what, Dan? I'm... Dan, you I, wash I, that dick because I'm gonna <laughs> suck it later. Yeah, I know. I know. Nah, I, I, know. On it. I for I one, know. Dan, I for one am glad that your dick doesn't float. I think that's, uh, I, I think that makes you special. It probably, I, when I, if I think about if I was going to perform oral uh, 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 pleasures <laughs> on a gentleman, Filatio. I would like to start with a little like uh, salted nut, like fucking, <laughs> like a little a little thumb tip, like right above the knuckle, and like have the pleasure of the fucking Fur! Happy New Year. <laughs> it would make me feel more masculine and like. I like that. It's like, like, like every, and so does every Cracker Jack prize. Like everyone says, like, oh, it's a dinosaur. You drop it in the water and you. Baby, I guess I I'm, we are. Love, we have the phrase grower, not a shower. But dick. sorry, go ahead. I, I, I was just saying, I love your dick a lot. Thank you. Cliffhanger. <laughs> Thank you, New York. Thank you so much, New York Comedy Festival. Thank you, Tribeca. Thank you, New York City. Let's give it up for Rob Straub. The Da Vinci Codes, Cody Heller. You gotta love it or leave it. Steve Levy, the guy that got us all here safe and sound. <laughs> Roger Critton, and I'm your comptroller, Jeff Davis, and your mayor is Dan Harmon. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Chris Borough. 
Thank stay you honest, all. stay gentle, stay vulnerable, stay brave. In New York, I love you so much. We love it here. Drive fast and take chances. Did you get any of that? It's a good show.